Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Girl Talk, episode 21 for Spooky Season. As you can see, you have just got me again. I decided to cover another true crime case as I got lovely feedback and messages about the last one. So thank you so much for that. I really hope you enjoy this one as much or if not more than the last one. I do just want to give a warning before I start this video that this is a very heavy case and if this isn't something that you can listen to right now then please do click out of the video. I have got a lot of lighter and more funny videos on this channel so don't forget to click that subscribe button as well. So just to warn you this case is about the assault and murder of a nine-year-old child on halloween so like i say this is quite a heavy case so if you can't watch that right now then please do click out for this video i'll see you again soon hopefully i also just want to give a disclaimer that everything i found online so i'm sorry if my research isn't good enough or if there is inaccuracies I also just want to say that all opinions are my own and I also want to apologise if I get the pronunciations wrong of a lot of the places and the names because I am from the UK so I'm not used to some of these spellings. <laughs> so without further ado let's get on with the case. Lisa Ann French was born on June 2nd 1964 in Oshkosh with Constance to parents Alan French and Mary Ann Garrett. She lived in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, with her mother and stepfather Bruce, a newborn half-brother. Lisa was a fourth grader and a member of the Girl Scouts. On October 31st, Halloween 1973, when Lisa was just nine years old, she was out trick-or-treating. She was alone near her home before she was planning to go to a neighbourhood Halloween party. Lisa was dressed as a hobo, wearing a black felt hat, green parka coat, jeans with blue masking tape, and dotted on freckles on her cheeks. She was full of excitement as she left her home about 5.45pm, ready to go and collect some sweets from her neighbours. Lisa had intended to go with her friend Anne Parker, but sadly Anne, due to being a bit naughty, had been grounded, so Lisa had to go trick-or-treating alone. It was reported that Lisa had stopped at classmates' houses surrounding in the surrounding area and even a teacher's house to collect candy before she made her way to a neighbour's house nearby. Gerald Miles Turner Jr., 25 years old at the time of the murder, who at the time lived with his girlfriend and their infant child, According to Turner, Lisa rang his doorbell, said trick or treat, and walked through his open door happily, with her bag open, ready to collect some candy from him. As Turner came to the door, Turner began talking to Lisa about candy, and at some point then lured Lisa to his bedroom, where he proceeded to assault little Lisa and eventually murder her. Lisa was then brutally assaulted, so much so that she actually stopped breathing. According to Turner, he then tried to revive her, but was interrupted when his girlfriend came home suddenly. She had been at the party that Lisa was supposed to be at. She arrived home around 7pm in the evening. Turner was apparently wearing a bathrobe and claiming to feel sick. She said Turner made several trips to the bedroom to lie down. And that is because Lisa's body was in, in the bathroom adjacent to the bedroom at the time. After his girlfriend had left the house again at around 8pm to go and visit her mother, Turner then got, back to, then got to work to cover up his heinous crime. He proceeded to stuff Lisa's body and clothes into separate bags and then drove with her body to Teixeira, Wisconsin where he then discarded her body in a farm field off McCabe Road. In an effort to avoid leaving any evidence or fingerprints on Lisa's body or at the crime scene, Turner wore socks on his hands when he moved Lisa's body. He also wiped down her zipper on her parka coat from her costume. Whilst all of this was going on, Lisa's mother was grown very concerned as Lisa did not return, return home for her 7pm curfew. 
but she thought maybe she was just having too much fun but as it grew later and later she was becoming a lot more concerned and by 10 p.m that night there was a full search party formed looking for lisa the search parties grew and grew as did concern for lisa finally after a four-day county-wide extensive search for Lisa, which, which included over 5,000 volunteers, 700 were block parents where they lived, auxiliary police officers, the United States National Guard, and also fellow Girl Scouts. A farmer called Gerald was returning home in his tractor in the farm where Lisa had been left. And on November 3rd, 1973, around approximately 11.30 a.m., she was discovered. He discovered two brown plastic bags behind, barbed wire, behind a barbed wire fence near a forest on McCabe Road. One was containing Lisa's naked body and the other one containing the clothing from her Halloween costume. An autopsy performed on Lisa's body revealed that Lisa died from asphyxiation. Though a pathologist had also stated that she had also died from circulatory shock, from the vicious trauma that she endured at the hands of Turner. Lisa's funeral was held days later on November 6th, 1973, at Emmanuel Trinity Lutheran Church in her hometown. On November 8th, 1973, the Chamber of Commerce posted a $10,000 reward for the capture of Lisa's killer. Turner was initially made a suspect of the murder of Lisa early in the vest investigation, but it actually took him nine months of questioning and tests and testing until he finally confessed to the murder of Lisa. On August 8th, 1974, he confessed to the rape and murder of Lisa Ann French, who was just nine years old. During his nine months of scrutiny from police, he underwent a polygraph test, but as we all know, these aren't always accurate. The results came back inconclusive and he also refused to do a second one. Police had collected body hair and bedspread fibres samples from Turner, which were then matched to those collected from Lisa's body and clothing. In his confession, Turner stated that when he saw Lisa in the doorway that night, he was highly sexually motivated. After all his awful acts were performed, he then noticed that Lisa had stopped breathing after the assault, but he then put his head to her chest and realised he could still hear her heart beating. He apparently then attempted to revive her by placing his chat by placing his hands over her chest and listening again until he was startled when he heard his girlfriend's car pull up to their house. Turner was taken into police custody on August 9th, 1974 and then convicted on February 4th, 1975 by a jury on the charges of, of second-degree murder and enticing a child for immoral purposes and acts of sexual perversion. He was sentenced to 38 years and six months in prison. Turner was paroled on October 13th, 1992, after serving just 17 years and 8 months. Released for good behaviour, his parole sparked multiple community protests and public outrage amongst Lisa's family and residents of Milwaukee, which is where Turner was living in a halfway house during his first parole. This prompted lawmakers to create a sexual predator law in Wisconsin, Chapter 980, nicknamed Turner's Law, which was ratified on May 26, 1994. This law allows criminals who have been paroled or released from their prison sentences to be detained in mental institutions if they are deemed to have a substantial probability of committing another similar crime. Turner was actually sent back to prison in 1993 on the 23rd of November because the Department of Corrections they had miscalculated his mandatory parole release from his good behaviour. 
On January 1998, after a four-day trial, a jury ruled that he was not a violent predator, meaning he could not be held under the Turner's Law and could begin his mandatory second parole that year. But later, Turner was sent to prison once again after violating his parole in 2003. He was given another 15 years to his sentence when it was discovered he had a lot of pornographic content. Whilst in prison, he wrote a letter to Lisa. I won't read the whole thing because there is a lot, but I will read you some quotes from this letter that Turner wrote to Lisa. I doubt I could ever fully realise the terror you experienced at my hands, and I can still see you standing in my doorway with that felt hat beaming at having recognised me. Then I see the te- then I see the delight in your eyes turn to terror. Further into the letter, he also said, quote, If it had happened on some other day, like Valentine's Day, nobody would have gave a damn, which I don't really think is true, but I also see his point in the fact that Halloween is such a memorable time. It is very famous in the sense that it is a Halloween murder, and also the fact that Lisa was out trick-or-treating and she was supposed to be having fun with her friends and her family, dressing up. It's such a time where children are free and having fun and I think that is something that really makes this case very memorable because it is a Halloween murder and I think that this murder will haunt a lot of people, especially parents of young children and children in general and I think it will become a cautionary tale. In terms of me saying that it will become a cautionary tale... It actually has changed a lot for the people of Wisconsin, where Lisa was from. So the murder of Lisa actually sent shockwaves through the local community, which isn't surprising. And it actually caused more stringent daylight trick-or-treating hours in Wisconsin, which is great. But for me personally, in my personal opinion, and this might seem a pessimistic view, but I think it is just realistic in terms of the world that we're living in now and even back then I fully believe that if someone wants to do something and someone wants to harm someone and they're in that mindset it doesn't matter if it's in darkness or daylight they are going to commit that crime if there's an opportunity and if they really want to do something they will do it And that is just my personal opinion. Obviously, you guys can let me know what you think. But in my personal opinion, children should always be accompanied by an adult when they are trick-or-treating, whether that be day or night. I think night, I know it wasn't very late, but again, that doesn't matter. It was just a crime of opportunity and he wanted to commit this crime and he did. So regardless if a child's on their own in daylight or at night time, it's going to happen either way in my opinion. So I think children should always be supervised and everyone should be kept safe at Halloween or any other time. Because if you look at other cases, for example, if you look at the Soham murders with Holly and Jessica happened in daytime where they were lured into the house of Kevin Huntley and they were just, I think, I feel sure they were just out buying sweets. So it was daytime and then their parents obviously thought that they were at each other's houses and then obviously the alarm was raised and they were obviously discovered, etc. But that's just one example. And so I think everybody should be kept safe at all times, especially children and especially on Halloween. That is the end of that case, guys. Please, please let me know what do you think of this case? I know that this one is definitely quite a thought-provoking one. I had loosely heard of this case, but I hadn't known it in so much detail until I actually did the research and looked at it properly. So it's definitely an interesting one, to say the least, and obviously a very sad one. Um, I'm thinking a lot of people are going to have their opinions on this case. So like I say, please do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Um, Do you agree with my opinions? Do you not agree? Let's have a chat and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel 
share with a friend and also go and enter the giveaway so if you are in the uk you can still enter my giveaway to be in with the chance of winning the body shop advent calendar in time for the lead up to christmas so we're getting closer and closer so make sure you share with your friends and we'll get there even quicker so yeah i will see you guys very very soon hopefully next week as i as you might have known i have started my new job so my life is quite hectic at the moment but i'm trying my best and i make sure you have a very safe halloween and i'll see you very very soon love you bye